Hello YouTubers. Well I hope what you're seeing is uh, my screen and it is of a picture that a friend sent me uh, which um, I think is a wonderful picture. Um, he's a friend who has horses and uh, the nice thing about the picture is that he has seen the opportunity he's seen the early morning light and the mist and uh, whilst the whole thing it has this has this wonderful atmosphere i think and it's it's sort of a slow blues as opposed to a sort of heavy metal uh, it's not saturated oversaturated with color and so it, it is a wonderful picture and i like it very much but um, you can see that I have opened it up in Photoshop Elements uh, because I think I would like to do some uh, editing to it to see if I can um, make it even better. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, as you know, Photoshop uh, does all its work by layers, these uh, uh, transparent layers that you stack one above the other and can fiddle about with and um, do. So uh, presumably you have uh, set your Photoshop element so it shows your all the tools available to you on the left hand side and you have um, you've gone to uh, window and tick the box that says show layers so if we go to tick the box and show layers you see the layers on the right hand side well when you're working in photoshop then uh, you always make a copy of of the background and um, to do that uh, you hit command and j if you're working on a mac or you hit uh, Control and j if you're working on one of those pc things so with the layer one as it's called which if you had a whole multiple of layers which you might do if you were doing graphic design and you were designing the cover of a magazine or something you might finish up with hundreds of layers you might like to name it so you do have the opportunity to rename it but uh, we don't need to do that because I'm only going to work on one layer so uh, what do we think about the picture well, I've described what I think about it and I compliment the cameraman on on seeing this moment and I dare say that he um, he took many, many pictures uh, and selected the best and, uh, you know, the sort of serendipity of uh, the accident of what comes out is good. But if you half close your eyes, then obviously the dog, nice as he is, really stands out in the picture and that's something that really we don't want so how do we get rid of him well we have a tool which is called a stamp tool it's here on the left hand side uh, and we're going to close the clone stamp tool as with all programs you will see that you have a menu bar at the top and um, um, sorry and um, you will see that you're going to clone with a brush there are many 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 brushes and you can even make your own custom brush if you want but choose a soft edged brush and for this case have a hundred percent opacity and the mode as normal and we can clone out the dog so how do we do that well i mean i just it's going to take hours and many times to do it but we have a brush of that size if you want to increase the size of the brush then you hit the right hand bracket so suppose we have something ridiculous like that and we hold down alt to set a target of what we want to clone out photoshop has now taken that data and we can plonk it over there many times as we like and we've cloned out the dog but i mean that's rubbish really that's just illustrating how you would how the clone tool works shall we say it's always necessary when you're working on a picture to uh, work uh, very large so with the 
hit Z or Z if you're an American on the keyboard and you get your zoom tool so we'll zoom in and see what we've done if you want to scroll the picture around hold the space bar down and drag it so you can see that we've now we've now cloned out the dog in that uh, rather very unsatisfactory way so um, we're not going to accept that so if we do uh, control and Z control and Z until we get rid of all of those uh, items um, we're back to where we started so if we want to fit it on the screen we hit control and zero and fit it back on the screen sorry about that selection i made there earlier so we hit control and d to get rid of that um, so i will do that cloning out and then i will come back and uh, we'll move on to another aspect of uh, changing this very nice picture that uh, we have hello again youtubers i'm sorry about the ghost-like image you'll see of myself on the pictures i'm about to show I had to work around this blasted tripod and i had to work at about 45 degree angle but i hope it hadn't spoiled the video so um, well hopefully i think you'll agree that we have uh, eliminated the dog from the picture and we must now think about composition of the picture so um we're going to crop it let us see on the keyboard we'll get access to the crop tool uh just make sure that there uh, are no set sizes here um well since the um since the animals are moving from right to left in my opinion i think there should be more space on this side of the image so they've got a space to move into than on this side um, at the moment the main uh, character is more or less in the middle of the picture and uh, we don't really want him there so let's have a go um, the main part that's in focus is the foreground here so we don't want to lose too much of that so let's start up here and uh, see what we think of that of course for the ideal picture uh, it's always uh, best to use what's called the golden section and if uh, if you have time to compose your picture in the camera then that of course would be a very much better thing to do and uh, you could uh, you could make up a card like this of the golden of the proportions of the golden section with this picture i don't think we can do that we could put grid lines on that if we wished but um, uh, let's just play about with this. We don't need to twist it or turn it. Um, let's just see what happens if we... Yes, I'm, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Um, yes. Uh, so um, in the case of uh, speed, let's accept that by... Uh, hitting enter so now we have a recomposed picture now one of the first things you do in photoshop is to see if you have got all the colors and tones in the picture so you go to your levels palette for that hit uh, command and um, command and l and you get the levels paddle, uh, palette and you can see from this histogram that um, the uh, this is the end for the um, black and this is the end for the white so we can play about with that I doubt that we'll be able to improve it quite honestly but if we were to bring the slider to the highest point of the histogram on that side and to there uh, do we think that's better this takes a lot of consideration so I'll, I'll I'll say yes I think that is okay so we'll okay that if we bring the levels palette up again we've got opportunity to 
choose sort of white points, black um, black points and midpoints. If we were to choose the midpoint pointer, what would we think would be the midpoint of the um, of the greys? I would think maybe somewhere about there. And we see that the picture alters. Well, one can play about with this, uh, you know, sort of quite a lot, really. Um, and then it would take too long to do it. But I was quite satisfied with the um, with the other picture that we have here. Um, maybe it's a little too bright. I don't know whether we can shift the mid-tune slider to bring in a little more. Yes, I like that better. Um, one would have to give this a lot of consideration. Okay, so let's assume that we uh, we we like we like our uh, picture. I think possibly I w I would like to increase the perspective a bit by blurring some of these images more in the background. So we can do that with a. Um, well, we can just use an elliptical marquee tool and we can uh, take an area, say about around there, that we want to blur, blur more. If ever you use a selection, then you have to, it's very wise to feather it. It's set at the moment to be feathered by 30 pixels. I can't quite get in there. You'd have to know how much to feather it according to the um, the amount of pixels in your image, which is quite easy to find. Uh, but uh, you feather it because you don't want any hard edges at all. So uh, um, let's, um, I don't, I'm working sideways here, so I don't knock the thing. Let's go to 20 pixels then. And... Um, now we want uh, to find a filter, we want a blur filter, and we want Gaussian blur, and you'll get up an image of the area that you're going to blur. If you, we're only blurring by one pixel here, so we want to certainly increase that. Um, click on once to hold it to see the original, and to see how much you've blurred it. It's all guesswork um, at this stage, and I'm not. Don't intend to print out this picture, so it's uh, it's just an exercise in the things that you can do. So if we'll okay that, that's fine. If we want to get rid of this selection, Control and D gets rid of the selection, and well, we could consider that the picture is finished, and I I quite like it. How it would print is a matter of experiment. Uh, you would have to get up your printer, uh, Command P, bring up your printer, and and you've got all sorts of options within your printer to do all sorts of uh, all sorts of things. So I I think in view of the time, I'd better kill this video uh, but this is where we started this is this is where we finished no we didn't that is where we finished um, and I think it's considerable improvement so uh, I hope that has interested you and um, um, that's it and uh, goodbye